Hello friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA, predicted phenotype, traits and GED match results of two global arm for a culture individuals. Uh, I think this is the third video I've made on this culture. Uh, make sure you watch the other two. Let's begin with the video. The two samples we'll be looking at are cosica3 underscore 1 and cosica3 underscore 3. Uh, 3 underscore 1 is this woman and uh, this is a little bit of a higher quality file. It's actually a very high quality file, 50 megabytes, um, pretty much every... Uh, variation that I look for to determine phenotype was in the file. She's got green color eyes, snub shaped nose and blonde hair. For eye shape, my eye shape predictor tool is giving her Middle Eastern eye shape. Uh, for uh, hair shape, she's got straight hair. Uh, Snipper Free is saying she's got blue eyes, blonde hair and white skin. But you see why Sec is giving her a brown hair prediction. She's got BH1. Well, my, my tool, my national code agrees with Snipper Free. My tool is saying she's got blonde hair. Uh, she's got BH1, blue eye haplotype 1, and BH2, and she does not have BH3 or BH4. Based on her genotype in SLC 24A5, uh, she's got light Eurasian skin tone and traits. However, she's got some genotypes in Keto G, SLC 45A2, uh, ASIP, where she's got She's got a genotype that suggests she might have had darker pigmentation than what's typical for modern Northern Europeans in terms of skin color, eye color, everything else. It's all kind of related. Um, she does have one Derard variant in, in IRF4 variation that has to do with blue eyes and pale skin and red hair. And this is a very interesting uh, genotype because uh, it's pretty rare for modern Europeans to have derived variants here but when it comes to European hunter-gatherers, most of them had derived variants in this variation. When it comes to modern Europeans, uh, Europe most likely to find draft variants in this IRF 4 variation in Irish people and some Northeast Europeans in the extreme Northeast corner of Russia. I've seen like a, I'm going to show this on the screen actually. I've seen a um, source that says that it is pretty common among Northeastern Russians. Now we're moving on to Kosica 3 underscore 3. Uh, this woman had blue eyes with a neighbor center. Uh, Greek shape nose, actually a very Middle Eastern nose shape according to my uh, nose shape predictor that's a part of my Nashakot tool and blonde hair just as the previous individual. Uh, with my eye shape predictor tool, my eye shape predictor tool is also predicting her to have Middle Eastern eye shape. That's why in the image you see she looks a little bit different. I tried to make her look uh, morphologically Middle Eastern but of course with European coloring. Uh, she's got uh, with the Snipper she's got blue eyes and blonde hair once again, and with Wysek, she's also got blue eyes, blonde hair. Uh, well, blue eyes with a neighbor center is a little bit different from blue eyes in terms of phenotype. It looks a little bit different. You can usually tell the difference between blue eyes with a neighbor center versus blue from a distance. Uh, and she's got BH1 and BH2, and she's actually also heterozygous for BH3, and she does not have BH4. Uh, she's got very light coloring genotypes. If you look at her genotypes in SLC 24A5, ASIP, Keto G, SLC 45A2, uh, even her genotypes in Tier 1 and IRF 4 suggest that she had a very light color uh, phenotype. However, she does have some dark gen um, genotypes. She has some dark. Uh, variants in OCA2 and SLC 24A4 region, hence why her prediction is actually blue eyes with a neighbor center and not just blue eyes. Uh, she's also a carrier for the red hair MC1R mutation. Uh, you see on the very bottom right of the screen there is a MC1R mutation where she's got one derived variant, but despite having this one derived variant in MC1R, she's still more likely to be blonde than ginger. Both of these individuals score pretty much the same with GD match, so I just kind of went with the 3 underscore 1 individual uh, to represent both of them. And in fact, they both represent what's typical for uh, globular amphora in general. Uh, all of the other globular amphora samples score the same things as these two individuals. And uh, with Eurogenes K13 Oracle, she's closest to Spanish from Aragon. And actually getting one of those a mixture of Sardinian plus Basque, so very Western. Uh, I think Basques have a little bit of Indo-European ancestry, which complicates matters, but Sardinians don't really have any Indo-European ancestry. Uh, this is what she scores with MZLPK11, very kind of a farmer, but there is farmer plus uh, Scandinavian hunter-gatherer. You can see line number one as Anatolian Neolithic plus 35% Scandinavian hunter-gatherer. So these individuals were farmers, but they were actually a mixture of Anatolian Neolithic plus a little bit from European hunter-gatherers. Uh, with 
PANDN LK12, you can see closest to Iberia and Mesolithic, which are farmers from Iberia. And with PANDN LK10, you can see getting modeled as a mixture of um, ENF and Western Hunter Gatherer. ENF is this kind of uh, hypothetical group here. It's not actually a European farmer, it's actually a much more southern component. You can see with the Oracle, she's closest to Sardinians. Uh, if it was actually a European farmer and you had just half European father, farmer plus half VHG, that would not be closest to Sardinians, obviously. And uh, this is what she scores with Ancient Eurasia K6. Once again here, the Natufian and the West European hunter-gatherer, they don't really represent reality because somebody who's half Natufian, half Western hunter-gatherer would not be closest to all of these Southwestern Europeans. They would be very Northern. Uh, but this individual is pretty much around um, three quarters European farmer, early European farmer, plus one quarter Scandinavian hunter-gatherer, as you can see from these results. Uh, maybe it was a little bit too fast. The video went a little bit too fast for my speech. I talk a little bit slower. But uh, with Gedrosia K3, you can see this individual is very West Eurasian uh, and very, you know, white. Now we're moving on to their traits with my genome analyzer tool. Let's start with... Um, let's start with 3 underscore 1, which is the higher quality sample. So three underscore one, come on, do it, do it. Okay, GG in Valmet, which means Val Val genotype, which means uh, advantage in stress resilience, but disadvantage in attention tax. What this means is that it's a, a warrior genotype, less dopamine, higher activity of the Compt enzyme, TT here, which leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme and slower breakdown of dopamine. So these two are the opposite. This one means higher activity of the Compt enzyme, and this one means uh, lower activity of the MAOA enzyme. MAOA and COMT are both enzymes that do the same thing. They break down dopamine as well as like norepinephrine and adenosine and kind of a bunch of other stuff. Uh, but we, mon we mainly care about dopamine here. Um, she's got AA or to derive no goler no variants, excuse my pronunciation, in the d 2 pro pro variation, which causes a significant reduction in the number of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain, a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia, and an increased likelihood, blah, 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 basically less dopamine D2 receptor availability. Uh, AG here, which is implicated in slightly higher increased number of dopamine D2 receptor sites, so this is kind of counteracting this. Uh, GG in TAC1, which once again is the typical genotype for most humans, and leads to slightly higher amount of dopamine D2 receptor sites avail availability compared to, for example, AA genotype or AG, which would lead to a decrease in the availability of dopamine D2 receptor sites. Um, so what about 5-HTC LPR? TT here, which means short form 5-HTC LPR, just like most of you guys, just like most of you guys watching this video, you probably have short form 5-HTC LPR. But wait a second, she has TC here, uh, which actually leads to long form 5 HTC LPR and lower risk of depression. And this is a rare genotype. So she probably does have long form 5 HTC LPR. Um, because if you have either if you have either one of this, if 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 your genotype for either one of these two uh, variations is heterozygous or you have two derived variants, you're gonna have uh, long form 5 HTT LPR. I have actually both. So I have definitely long form 5 HTT LPR. And this individual has one of them, heterozygous genotype. So uh, probably has long form 5 HTT LPR and lower odds of depression. Uh, for empathy, higher levels of empathy, higher levels of empathy. So this individual, based on her genotype in OXTR, she's got a higher, higher level of empathy. Uh, for diabetes, Sevenfold de decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes, does not have type 1 diabetes. For hemochromatosis, does not carry any, any of the hemochromatosis variants. For Alzheimer's, uh, these two are the ones that are important and does not have any APOE2 alleles, so doesn't have Alzheimer's. Um, she's got AG here, which leads to lower risk of myopia and slightly better eyesight. This is pretty cool. Um, this is a very European, I don't know if it's Northern or Southern or if it's just European in general, but it's a very European genotype to have the G allele here. If you have the G allele, if you have AG or you have GG, that's really great because that leads to a much lower risk of myopia and it's a super European, once again, as I've said before, genotype to have. Um, I have AA. Most of you guys watching probably have AA and it's regardless of what your uh, ethnicity is, you probably have AA, but if you have AG or GG, you're probably a European. For miscellaneous section, no micro P, no micro P, you know what that is. Uh, I, I'm not going to pronounce this here because uh, monetization. So, four points higher IQ, lower IQ, um, slightly increased cranial size and 1% higher IQ. Uh, what about a typical trace panel? Not a carrier albinism, not a carrier, 
not a carrier, not a carrier, not a carrier. Decreased risk of cleft lip and palate, and not a carrier of Melanesian blonde hair variant. So it doesn't have any of the albinism mutations or the Melanesian blonde hair variant mutation. Interesting. Now, now let's move on to three underscore three. Right. Three underscore three has got AA in Valmet, which means actually uh, Met Met genotype, which means warrior. It's a very, it's a super interesting genotype to have. Basically, it means you have much lower activity of the Compt enzyme, and you got a lot more dopamine building up. Uh, TT here, which actually also leads to lower activity of the MAOA enzyme and slower breakdown of dopamine. So this is once again um, two warrior genotypes in MA, but one is in MAOA and another one is in Compt. So this individual definitely got more dopamine going on in their system. And wow, what's what's even if it's what's even more crazy about this individual is when you look at this genotype here. Which means no derived, no gold or variants in DRD2 pro in pro variation. That's kind of concerning. Like when you see somebody with this genotype here plus this plus this, that kind of gives me the idea that they might have schizophrenia or bipolar or something like that. Because if you have this much dopamine building up in your system based on these two genotypes, um, you gotta have at least less dopamine receptor availability, dopamine D2 receptor availability, because when you have GG here, which means increased number of D2 dopamine receptor sites in the brain, together with these two, that can lead to some trouble when it comes to um, mental health. But it seems that everything might not be so bad, because this individual actually has AG in TAC1, which does slightly decrease uh, the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. So maybe it's not that bad, because, but if this individual has had GG here, it would be concerning. I would say it's, I would say it would be concerning if this individual had GG here. Um, okay. Oh, oh, she also has AA in this variation. Okay, so it's, it's not that bad. Uh, AA in this variation does decrease the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. Uh, what about 5-HTTLPR? Short form and short form. Yeah, so this individual has short form 5-HTTLPR. No decreased risk of depression for her. Uh, for lactose persistence does not carry for the empathy gene OXTR two variants for high levels of empathy and heterozygous genotypes here and here so probably slightly higher levels of empathy than what's typical for average person for diabetes uh, CC here which leads to once again sevenfold decrease in the risk of type 1 diabetes does not have type 1 diabetes for chemochromatosis not a carrier for Alzheimer's uh, no risk alleles in APOE, so uh, this is the only one that really matters. So yeah, I have, I have these three uh, in the end, but they don't really matter all that much as the first two. For myopia, AA here, so you see, um, she does not have the G allele here. She does not have the G allele, which is the European allele that protects against myopia that the previous individual did have. Um, miscellaneous, no micro P, no micro P, we know what that is. Um, eight points higher IQ than individuals with the AA genotype, but also some very, some genotypes for lower IQ, like here and here. Um, this genotype is pretty interesting. This is one of the uh, variations that 23andMe uses for their health reports. So, uh, according to her genotype in this variation, she's got impaired muscle performance and she's most likely an endurance athlete rather than a power power or or sprinter, power athlete or sprinter for albinism and atypical traits. Not a carrier for this, not a carrier for this, not a carrier for this, not a carrier for this. Not a carrier for any of the albino mutations, and not a carrier for the Melanesian blonde hair variant, and also does not have the uh, variants that increase the likelihood of cleft lip and palate. So, just a very normal looking woman. Uh, well, that's pretty much all I had to say, that's all I had to cover for these two samples. Uh, you can download both of them in 23andMe format from link which is in the description and leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy my content. Goodbye.